Good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, whatever time it is in your part of the world right now. Uh, thank you for joining Biamp's NPX Paging Station webinar. Uh, so my name is Sam Patterson. I've been with Biamp uh, as an application engineer for 10 years now. So some of you may already know me uh, or have attended one of my webinars in the past. Uh, but today we're going to cover everything NPX, which is Biamp's new paging solution. Uh, if there's anything I don't answer in this presentation or you'd like more information, I'll be stopping at certain times uh, and we can answer questions then. And you can always get in touch with us at support at biamp.com uh, through your local Biamp distributor or your Biamp sales rep. Uh, so if there's something I'm going to cover later in the presentation, I'll just defer the question till then. Uh, so the NPX has been anticipated for a while now. Um, the, the release was delayed a little longer than we'd all hoped. Um, however, it was important to us that uh, the biomp quality and performance was maintained. Uh, so I thank you all for your patience. Uh, and the great news is the NPX is here and uh, it's shipping now. All right, so we've got two versions in the paging station family. We've got uh, the gooseneck and the handheld models. Uh, and yeah, two models within those as well. So the NPX part of the model name defines the product family. The G or the H defines whether they're a gooseneck or a handheld. And the 1040 and the 1100 specify the number of buttons on the keypad. So the 1040 uh, has four buttons and the 1100 has 10. Now up to 16 stations are supported within a single system. So even those systems that may have multiple server class devices, uh, it's a max of 16 stations. And uh, these stations can uh, page to up to 32 zones. Okay, so common features uh, across all four models uh, is that it's supported on Tessera, uh, but additionally, they'll be supported on the QTX platform. So uh, Biamp's, the, the QTX is Biamp's uh, sound masking device uh, for those who uh, are not familiar with that. So, uh, but the focus of this webinar is going to uh, specifically be on the Tessera platform. So these can either be uh, wall mounted uh, or a table mount. So all of them feature a removable foot that uh, we can see being detached in the slide there. So this can be screwed to a table uh, and then the, the paging station uh, just snaps in. And uh, so that can be used to permanently fix it in position. So they also come with a back plate for attaching to a back box or a, uh, for wall mounting. Uh, and the units uh, also feature a Kensington lock slot uh, for securing, physically securing the station. So uh, AVB and Dante in all models. So no additional license is required for using the protocol of your choice. Uh, they do come with both. So, um, but one thing to note with this is it's one protocol uh, system wide. So either all your 16 stations must be all configured as AVB uh, or all as Dante, uh, depending if what other devices uh, are on the network. And these are also PoE plus uh, class three devices. So uh, audio and power over a single ethernet connection. All right, so let's talk about functionality of the stations. Um, we have a, a pin code that you can use to restrict access to the stations. And this will be in the form of a four digit number. Uh, there is 16 priorities, so this uh, is useful for your page code hierarchy, uh, giving more preference, more weighting to uh, a more priority uh, page code. So, all right, up to 999 page codes uh, on the uh, 10 button station. So this is going to be in the form of a three digit number. Uh, so for the 10 button, you would call the code by entering uh, the three digits. Uh, and for the four button, they are constrained to four page codes. Uh, however, 
these, uh, the page codes are allocated to specific buttons. All right, so there's 10 slots available for recorded messages and up to 15 minutes uh, of available storage space. Uh, the station also features an LCD, coloured LCD, uh, which is nice uh, high-res display um, and it has a wide viewing angle. Uh, so we can record uh, messages directly on the station. So these are going to become part of uh, the total, uh, the 10 message store slots. So uh, you will use a slot up for recording messages directly on the station but uh, it is possible to use the microphone and do that. We also have default and customizable preambles. So the stations come with five uh, preambles already preloaded, and then we allow you to upload uh, five additional ones, five custom ones. And then there is also a zone ready uh, and a talk indicator for uh, operator feedback. All right, features specific to the gooseneck model is that there is a moment tree and a latching push to talk button. So the moment tree PTT we're probably all familiar with, um, uh, but an example where you may use the latching uh, it would be a sports presenter making a, a match long page without tying up their hands. Uh, or in the Middle East, you might uh, have the call to prayer so a uh, latching PTT is uh, useful for those scenarios. Okay, so uh, the handheld models, um, not much specific to it. Uh, the magnets uh, allow the handset there to uh, snap nicely to the station. So there's no uh, retaining clip or anything that uh, uh, you need to um, attach that handset to. Um, I, uh, the magnets just allow it to snap nicely to the station. So, and the handset itself feels uh, very nice, uh, good weight to it, um, and quite comfortable in the hand. So, all right. So, uh, on the stations themselves, uh, when a page is active, uh, you'll get a visual indicator of the level. So this is uh, for non-technical operators, so they know with where they're at uh, with their uh, levels coming in. So on the station here, we can see that there is uh, two deep green rings indicating at the moment there's no audio or simply ambient level audio. And these will change to a, the first ring is, uh, it'll uh, illuminate. And so that uh, indicates that it's limited level then we can go to good level, and then uh, it will indicate if the uh, signal is being is coming in too hot. All right. So uh, before we talk about the Tessera software, I'll um, stop pause for a moment uh, in case there's any questions. So if there is, just uh, put these into the uh, question dialog there. Uh, which one is preferred? I'm not quite sure. Uh, I wasn't looking at. Uh, uh, the questions uh, window here. So uh, if you could provide more information on that, please, that'd be great. Okay, so uh, we've got a question here. Uh, for the 10 button station, is it possible uh, to set those to act as uh, individual page codes, i.e. one page for uh, code one? So uh, I guess, uh, what's being asked there is button-based assignment for the 10 button stations. So for the 10 button stations, you will have to dial in uh, the three digit code. So 001 uh, or the corresponding number. Uh, it's only the four button station that we will uh, be able to do button-based assignment uh, at the moment. So, so a bit more on that uh, earlier question. So which platform is preferred, to Sierra or Cambridge? Um, so the Cambridge one is the QTX, which is a sound masking with paging. Uh, and to Sierra is the open architecture DSP. Um, so, I mean, it depends on what your application uh, is. Uh, 
to which solution would be more suitable. Okay, there's also one on uh, what format the, uh, the uh, audio files are, so, um, but we will get to that. Okay, so there is a, another question here. When we record messages into the uh, page station, how long will it stay in? Can it be recalled after it is played out? Uh, yes, it can. Uh, so you would just select the page code that is uh, linked to the message slot that you uh, wish to play out, and uh, they are retained uh, in the memory uh, as long as uh, you don't record over it or upload another message uh, over that. Um, so now there's another one here. Can you use the Cambridge emitters uh, for paging? You can, uh, that will be released, the NPX will be released for use with Cambridge uh, very soon. Uh, do the level rings respond in real time to the talker? They do indeed, so they will, it is a, a live feedback uh, and uh, it's quite uh, uh, sensitive, so it uh, refreshes quite fast, um, so you do get that uh, feedback as you are talking. And uh, that way you can adjust the, the mic, dis the distance to the mic um, or your level and then uh, uh, bring it down. Okay, can you mix Dante and AVB paging stations in one file? Um, you cannot. Uh, it either has to be all 16 stations or AVB or, uh, or Dante. So we'll, sh we'll show that later in the uh, presentation. There's one here about uh, uploading files to the paging station uh, if you don't record them directly uh, from the station itself, uh, but we will be covering that shortly. So at the moment, there's no more questions. So um, let's uh, go to the software and let's talk about the, uh, the blocks here. So you will notice that uh, up on our component toolbar here, we actually have a, a new component object. So this is our paging station, uh, I guess, options. So the paging and zone control is the cornerstone of our paging system. So we've got the paging stations and paging zones, uh, but it doesn't make sense to have a paging station without a paging uh, system. So what we're going to do first off is drop in our paging and zone control. And once we do, we get presented with an initialization dialog here. So uh, we uh, are asked to select one of our paging stations. So I have a G, a gooseneck four button station here. So I'll select uh, the G1040. Uh, um, it makes no sense to have a paging system without a paging station. So we just ask you to, to enter in one of your devices uh, currently. And so this is where we select the network type. So this is our where we select either AVB uh, or Dante, whether we want our system. Um, I guess the difference between choosing uh, either protocol is uh, if you have other AVB devices uh, or you have other third-party devices, Dante devices on your network. Uh, so that would depend and also uh, what protocol the host device is using. So, but for now, I'm gonna just select AVB and uh, the zone count, we can have up to 32 zones, uh, but for the moment, just going to leave it to 30 uh, to four zones. All right, so once we do this, we get our uh, family of paging station blocks. Uh, so we've got our uh, paging station here, the G1040, the paging and zone control, and our four paging zones. So, uh, but as I mentioned, the paging and zone control is the cornerstone of our paging solution. So uh, let's start with that. So this is where we add in uh, our page codes. So once we, we, we get to, once we add one in, we get a bit of uh, uh, properties here. So this would uh, indicate on the 10 button station to recall this page code, you would uh, dial in 001. 
Uh, this can be adjusted however you want. Um, now the label is going to be what is displayed on the uh, LCD. So I'm just gonna uh, put in there lower. Now we uh, assign our zones. So we've got our four zones available there. And now on our preamble, so we can either have no preamble, we can have one of the five uh, canned preambles, and then uh, slots six to 10 is the other five, and uh, we can select a custom preamble there. So we'll go through how to, uh, to upload those shortly. So, and now our action is whether it is a live, page, uh, so using the microphone, or if it is a recorded message. So we've got our 10 slots uh, available there. And uh, now the uh, priority, so the page code hierarchy, uh, one being the highest. So uh, while we're here in, uh, and looking at the priority scheme, um, when two overlapping pages uh, sorry, where two pages of overlapping zones occur, uh, the highest one uh, overrides the lower one. So as you would expect. Now, if the higher one uh, starts before the lower one, then the lower will be prevented. Uh, and that's even if only one destination zone overlaps. So uh, in this case, the uh, LCD will show destination busy. Uh, without even having to push the PTT first. So the zone state is known and communicated between stations. And uh, if you still tried to make a page, you would just get a page failed message. So uh, good feedback for the operator. Now, uh, if a lower priority page is started and then a higher priority page cuts in, the lower priority is going to continue for any non-overlapping zones. So it's not gonna get a hard cut off um, and then just silence. So in any of those non-overlapping zones. All right, so that is our page code setup. So just gonna go through and do another couple for our example here. Going to select some random options. Okay, so next, what we're going to do is assign these uh, page codes to our uh, four button station here. So once we open the dialog, we can see that uh, we can assign, or they, the four buttons here at the moment are unassigned, but to assign these, simply go through, use the edit button there to add in our codes. So what you'll see here is a bit of information uh, presented about the page code and uh, what it is. So again, we've got the three digits uh, for the page code recall, although uh, we just use the buttons on the four button station. What we will see on the LCD, our zone assignment. So should have selected all zones there. And uh, which uh, recording slot it is. All right, so that is for the four button station. Uh, that is the page code assignment. So, but there in there, then there is uh, some other tabs across the top here. So we've got the, on the audio tab, we've got some uh, meters and some level controls. So the mic in, uh, is actually the microphone capsule. 
And the playback level is uh, related to the recorded announcements, so we can have independent uh, level controls for those. And then the page out is the master, uh, the overall uh, level out there. Uh, the stations also feature onboard EQ, um, so we can add in a couple there. Um, terrible curve there, but uh, but we do have independent uh, microphone EQ and also uh, the recorded announcement EQ available. So, um, and the same with the compressor, basically. Uh, the compressor you, you're probably all familiar with, um, but uh, again, we've got the uh, different compression for the mic and the playback that you can set. Okay, so I also have a 10 button handheld here. So I'm gonna add that in, we can see the difference between the four button dialogue and the 10 button dialogue. So uh, what we do is, again, this is all just informative information and we just go through and assign our codes uh, by selecting which ones we want available there. Uh, and again, we've got the audio uh, EQ uh, as well. So no difference other than this uh, assignment screen. Okay, so I guess one thing to note here is to do with the page code setup and the paging station memory slots. So being that the slot is defined in the page code, so we've got recorded slot uh, one here in our page code on the lower level. Um, each station references its own memory. So our page code assigned to recall uh, slot one on our four button station could be assigned to a uh, store closing message. However, on our 10 button station, this same page code recalling uh, slot one, um, may have a uh, the store is closing or staff to the front counter announcement. Uh, so a different announcement to what is hosted uh, in the four button versus the 10 button. So that is just something to be aware of. So even though it is recalling the same page code, uh, the, the message is stored on the station itself. Uh, so you may, or you could get into the situation where you are e expecting a, one message, but another message is uh, coming out. So um, in that case, um, you know, just check your message store and uh, adjust accordingly. Okay, so the one object we haven't talked about is our paging zones. So in the dialogue here, we just have a uh, simple, it's a uh, essentially a ducking. Uh, so for any paging audio, uh, at the moment that's going to be the source input here on this side is going to be ducked uh, 30 dB when uh, paging is active. So What we can do is actually assign this to a different zone. Um, so now that we have two zone two blocks, uh, that will be um, separate uh, input sources, but the paging will uh, be routed to uh, both of these outputs. Now, alternatively, just going to switch that back to one, but we can in increase the channel count. So again, all these uh, input sources are going to receive the same paging audio, uh, but it's a discrete one-to-one -one relationship. So channel one goes to channel one output, uh, channel two goes to channel two and so on. 
Okay, so what you'll notice is that um, none of these have a, any logic nodes. Um, what we do, uh, there is a way if you wanted to play a message. Uh, it's a little bit more uh, set up, but it is also a lot more flexible. So now what we have to do, if we want to just simply play a, a message um, via a control system or the GPIO on the rear of the host device, either an XLogic or Canvas uh, scheduler or, or from SageView, is uh, we need to make sure, first off, that uh, we have a recorded announcement assigned to our paging station. Then what we need to do is actually uh, add the paging station to a preset. So we can see our paging station in here. Then if we select the block attributes, we get uh, presented with um, a few options here, but the one we're interested in is recalling a page code. So we can see at the moment, we've got our lower and our all, which correspond to our lower and our all uh, in our state in our paging station here. So it uh, doesn't matter which one for this demonstration, but what you'll notice is when I select OK, uh, the page code itself, so down here, will go italicized, uh, indicating that it is part of a preset and uh, that it cannot be modified until uh, removed from the preset. So. Uh, and that is also reflected in the paging and zone control block here. So uh, yes, we get that message there uh, that the page codes are unable to be changed. So it does give you feedback if you uh, did try and remove that or modify the page code number. Okay, so now that we've created the preset, uh, to recall our page code. What we need to do is add in a preset button and assign that. And then we have the logic node. So as I mentioned, this can be uh, triggered from a control system, um, GPIO, uh, uh, Canvas, scheduler or uh, through SageView. So uh, because it's easy enough, we'll just uh, cover how to add it to uh, the scheduler. So essentially you add in the scheduler block, uh, enable it so it's active on the web interface. Then uh, just using a standard internet browser, you enter the IP of the uh, Tessera and uh, that will take you to uh, the web interface uh, where you can set up the schedule uh, for the uh, recalling the preset here. So easy as that. Okay, so that is our uh, software blocks. Um, or actually, I've made a mistake. I want to change our protocol over to use Dante instead. I got it wrong at the start. What you'll notice is I'm unable to do that now. It's, uh, drop down isn't available and uh, the media network cannot be changed once initialized. So what I will have to do is remove the paging system and recreate one there. And then I am able to select uh, the Dante protocol and which uh, Dante network that is on. And you will see again, our paging and zone controls and uh, blocks we are familiar with. The only difference is in the paging and zone control uh, where we now have uh, a Dante channels tab. So I'm just gonna duplicate my paging station 
this example. And then once we go to the Dante channels, uh, what we have on the left here is our paging station. So paging station one through six, the output of that. And then uh, what we need to route that to in Dante controller. So that will be routed to paging station one output to station one input. So uh, it's just more informative uh, so that you know you can check your routing. Um, uh, so if you're expecting a page to come out in a certain area, um, but it's not, uh, or you don't hear the page at all, uh, I would suggest uh, referencing this Dante channels and then making sure your routing in uh, Dante controller is correct. Okay, so uh, I'm just gonna go back and uh, have a look at some questions here. Uh, one here is, say you have the questions connected to uh, the DSP via AVB, can you use Dante to transport the audio to QTX? Well, in this case, um, you can, but what you would need to do is have a Dante output. Um, so uh, you would have to have your stations all being AVB. Then uh, from your output of the Tessera, it would be a Dante output block and then to your Dante network. Um, so you, in that case, you would have to use a TC5D, which is uh, BIAMP's uh, AVB and uh, Dante uh, infrastructure device. Uh, so we will see them in a moment, uh, but that is the way that you would do it. Okay, how many speakers per zone? Uh, you can have as many as you like uh, speaker-wise, but uh, I think what you're meaning there is how many uh, outputs uh, per zone. Well, we can uh, increase the channel count to however many you need. I believe that's up to 32 channels per zone. So uh, we give you exceptional flexibility there. Uh, and then 32 channels uh, and 32 zones. So uh, a huge number of outputs there. Uh, there is a question about, can you hear the CAN preambles uh, somewhere or do you have to test them live? Well, uh, you do need to test them live uh, at this current release, uh, but I'm sure that will be uh, addressed in a, um, in a future subsequent release. But yeah, just cycle through them, assign them to uh, your device and your page codes, and uh, uh, you can test them out and see which one suits best. Okay, is the EQ applied to recordings made via the mic at the time of recording? Uh, it will not. Uh, it will be applied at playback. So it will go through uh, the DSP and uh, for the output and, um, and be applied then. Okay, so there is uh, another one here uh, in the paging station dialogue. So, uh, and this is, the question is referencing our 10 button station here. Uh, there is some arrows. Let me just, uh... So in the page code tab, there's some arrows next to each page code. Uh, what do these do? Uh, at the moment, they don't do anything. Uh, it is just uh, more information on your zone list and, um, and uh, that's, that's all, but you get that information here. So uh, I think that is just a, an additional way of, <laughs> Uh, seeing which zone assignment they are. Um, if you had more than, well, if you had uh, 32 zones and it doesn't fit in the zone column here, uh, you could use that to expand it out. Okay, so uh, for pre-recorded messages, uh, you have to record at each station or can you take a file and then upload it to stations? Uh, we'll get to that uh, in a moment when we're actually looking at uh, uh, uploading files, so uh, hold that question. Okay, so there is a question here, can a page code recall a preset? So by asserting the PTT button, um, 
I think a preset recall is uh, looking to be done, but at the moment, so uh, that is without additional logic and uh, signal route, signal present meters. So uh, that's, sorry, the full question. Um, at the uh, at the moment, no, uh, there is no logic outputs, so you would have to um, do some other way. Is there a way to export slash save pages uh, that you've recorded to a paging station? Uh, yes, there is. We'll be touching on that soon. All right. What if we want 90 zones? Uh, unfortunately, it's capped at 32, uh, but you can increase that channel count uh, for a little bit more flexibility. But uh, at the moment, it is set to 32 zones. Okay, so that is uh, all the questions for the moment. So what we will do is have a look at our device maintenance functions. Okay, so the NPXs are classed as remote devices. So this is where we will find them. Uh, so we can see I've got a, a, a four button gooseneck on my network here and also the 10 button handheld. So we get the IP addresses of those, uh, which is the which is the host proxy. Uh, so I'm using a Forte here, just model number, uh, again, description, uh, firmware versions as well. And uh, we get the uh, health uh, of the device feedback on that. So um, under the network settings, pretty standard stuff. We have our host name able to be adjusted. Uh, this is where you can set the IP address and uh, the MAC addresses tab here is just for information purposes. Um, so uh, you just get information on which, uh, uh, on the control uh, and the audio uh, MAC addresses there. So. Um, device description, uh, again, just uh, a simple uh, uh, description. But the one we'll probably be using most is the manage paging station. So again, up the top here, we just have some more uh, informative uh, information, uh, which we had back in the other screen as well. But uh, this is where we have our recordings. Uh, so we have our 10 slots available to upload messages uh, or download messages. So we want to upload a message. Uh, the audio file format is uh, WAVs, MP3s and M4As. Uh, so when you're uploading the file, uh, the software performs a validation to ensure the file meets the required bit rate, audio samples and the stereo information. Uh, downloaded files are in the WAV format only. So this one is a, a 4 minute 15 file and uh, it is uh, only available as a WAV file. And then you also have your uh, delete functions there if you want to clear out the slot. And on our preambles tab here, uh, we have uh, our five uh, set preambles. So these are unable to be modified. Um, they are the, the five that come with the station. Uh, and then you have your five other slots where you can upload uh, other custom preambles. So let's uh, answer one of those questions earlier. So if you want multiple uh, messages, if you want the same message uh, across multiple stations, uh, you do need to upload them to each unit separately. So there's no sharing or duplicating of messages uh, between stations other than through the software. Now. This applies to the messages recorded on the station directly. So to make that uh, available, uh, if let's say um, my test slot here was uh, recorded directly on the station, what we would have to do is download that file and then go into my other secondary 
uh, paging station and upload that. And now uh, if our page code was referencing uh, slot two for our recorded message, it would make sense to uh, also put that into uh, slot two of this paging station because that way the the, uh, the page code will um, recall uh, correctly. Okay, and so the other, the last item in the uh, in the dialog here is our uh, where we can set the pin code. So we can, as simple as uh, putting in uh, a, a four-digit pin. And then our timeout setting is how long the station will be inactive before the uh, pin code uh, unlock screen comes up. So, um, but at the moment, and the icon will change there to show you it's uh, secured. At the moment, I don't want to secure that. So we will uh, do that. And uh, so that is the device maintenance functions. I'm going to stop here because there uh, there may be a few questions. Any plans to add a play button? Uh, no, what we will do is just uh, you can download the file and play that out on your PC. Uh, you will have a PC connected anyway. Um, so uh, that would be the, the method you would use in that case. And that also applies for the recordings and the preambles. The five canned preambles, however, um, you are unable to download them. So I guess uh, you would have to assign those to your page codes and just uh, test it um, online. But uh, that should be easy enough, simple as adding a page code, assigning that preamble, signing it to a station and uh, and that way you can hear it play out uh, when you're you're doing your testing. Okay, so there's a question, can you add more than one paging system? Uh, I did mention this at the start of the presentation, but it is only a single paging system uh, consisting of up to 16 devices and 32 zones uh, for a, uh, a single system, even if it is a multi-device uh, system. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, 16 stations uh, system-wide. Uh, can you make the preambles available uh, on Cornerstone for previewing? Uh, Cornerstone is our uh, support site. Um, you're Most of you are probably aware, uh, but yes, we can make a, them available uh, for previewing on the support site, so I will uh, take that on notice and we will upload them so they'll be up there uh, very short. All right, so that's it for the questions at the moment. Um, so due to time, I'm not going to uh, create a full system, but uh, we can have a look at uh, what a example system can look like. So what we've got here is uh, our BGM inputs. This is a multi-purpose sporting facility. So this was taken from the, the design guide uh, where we have two fields, uh, a ball court, a tennis court, and a clubhouse with a cafe and locker room. So they are, these are all just BGM inputs. So available for our uh, sources going to our paging zones. Um, we have uh, our three stations, uh, paging stations available here. Now, all our page codes, and we can see that there is a couple here as part of a preset. Um, so our weekly specials, and there's a announcement in the locker room. And uh, so all of these will cut in or the BGM will be ducked uh, to the set amount here and the paging will go out to uh, the intended destination. 
So uh, the paging zone blocks are intended to be placed towards the output side of the system. Uh, post EQ, uh, seeing as the stations, so with post EQ, uh, seeing as the stations feature their own e onboard EQ. All right, so that uh, is it for the software. Hopefully I've covered everything there. So let me just check if there's more questions. There isn't, but please add any in to the uh, questions box if you, uh, if you do have any along the way here. So, all right, so switching back to uh, the presentation. Let's uh, talk about topology. So this is the uh, single cable mode that most of us should be familiar with. So we have our laptop just going to uh, our TC5, which uh, goes through to our NPX, and we have a single cable connection uh, for our control and AVB in this case uh, to our TC5. So all three are connected. Don't worry about the uh, other devices on the right hand side here. That's just a bit of noise. So yeah, this is a single cable mode setup that we should all be familiar with. Okay, and this is for separated mode. So you can see here, our laptop has two interfaces, um, goes to our TC5 and also to the control network. Um, and our media network goes to the MPX and also our AVB port. So at the moment, the ports on the host device are separated. So this is for when AVB and control uh, or the audio protocol and control aren't allowed on the same network. So this would be the top of topology we'd use. Um, it does require a bit more management um, as the stations do need direct communications from the software for the device maintenance functions, uh, such as the uploading and downloading of messages or setting the pin codes. Um, and then all other management features uh, and control settings uh, such as sending a configuration are handled via the control network. So uh, essentially we need uh, the uh, right hand um, uh, interface, network interface on the laptop there through to the TC5 to the NPX to do the message uploads and downloads. Uh, but then we need the control uh, network. Uh, so to the left of the laptop there, going through to the control port uh, for sending configurations. So for this example, let's say two network interfaces from the PC weren't available, which would be, which you could say would be more often than not. Uh, the PC's IP will need to be switched over to the other subnet uh, and the network uh, when you want to change between device functions of uploading messages versus sending configurations. So this is going to be updated in a future release to make it easier, but uh, for now, this is how you'd manage the station under this scenario. Okay, so this is our standard Dante topology. Uh, if your stations are all going to be using Dante. So we have a converged control and Dante network. Uh, this is necessary. Uh, seeing as we have to do management features and the channel routing, uh, but as well as the audio flows. So, uh, and on the NPX, there's only a single interface, single network interface. Uh, so uh, we do need that converged network to take our control and our Dante uh, flows there. All right. Uh, Firmware updates. So another notable item is the NPX firmware is not updated with the main Tessera firmware. It's a new concept for Tessera uh, because uh, NPXs are not regarded as a Tessera device, uh, rather a device that can be used with Tessera. Uh, this is because uh, it might be being used by the QTX. So the update uh, can happen from either platform 
So whichever one the station is currently assigned. So just referencing back to our uh, separate mode topology, uh, where the control and the media interfaces are separate, uh, the firmware update would be done on the control side of the network. Sorry, the, uh, it would be done on the media side of the network for the NPX, but then for the Tessera, you would do that on the control side. All right, so one more notable item uh, when using the NPX is that there is a need to set the date and time correctly on the host device. So uh, if it hasn't been set, uh, the NPX will be discoverable, but it will give a uh, certificate error like shown in the screenshot here. And additionally, in remote devices, you could uh, find the IP listed as 0.0.0.0. .0, .0, .0. Um, so that if you do get the certificate error, uh, that's what it uh, relates back to. Um, but it's good practice to set the time and date anyway. So uh, I doubt you'll run into this. Uh, so uh, the certificate error also applies to PCs that are in uh, a different language, so a non-English language. So if you're having trouble getting the station online, our support team is happy to assist. So please reach out if you find that there's any odd behavior or you do have any, any questions. All right, to access the on-station recording menu, so this is if you want to use the handset uh, or the gooseneck to record your message. So uh, to access that, you use the upper and lower buttons on the left of the LCD screen there. Now, once you do this, you'll be presented with your 10 storage slots um, and information on any messages that have been stored in those. So once you select the slot, uh, the recording screen will be presented. So you can either do that via the, uh, the button there or uh, just simply pressing the PTT. Uh, after this, you will be given the option to save or delete your recording. Um, and then once you, oh, once you select either option there, whether you save it or delete it, you will be taken back to uh, the message slot screen um, and then from there, you can return to the regular page code screen. All right, so uh, we do get, uh, we do have some information on the device. Um, the, probably the most uh, pertinent one there is the IP address. So if you're having trouble discovering your station, um, you know, you just, uh, and select those lower two buttons and see what uh, IP it is and the firmware version, serial number and so on. All right, so we've got some uh, great cornerstone resources. So uh, we've got the product landing page, um, which talks about how to uh, unbox, to remove the uh, removable foot uh, and just uh, a few setup uh, guides, but um, it also has a FAQ for any uh, commonly asked questions. So then there we've also got a resource on configuring a paging system. So this is essentially uh, an article of everything we've just covered in this webinar. Um, now using an MPX paging station as a message player, we've also talked about that, um, creating a preset and uh, assigning it to a preset button. Um, however, seeing as there's a few steps, we've uh, broken that out into a separate article. And, um, and that way, if you need a refresher, you can always reference that. Now, there is also a couple of design guides, uh, the shopping complex and the multi-purpose sporting facility, uh, which we saw the configuration file for there. So you can access uh, those online and that'll give you um, an example system and layout and functions of uh, of um, of the uh, of the two uh, implementations. All right, so we've come to the end. Thank you for all attending and staying this far. So hopefully you found this informative. 
Like we do lots of webinars on all different topics. So always keep an eye on the upcoming webinars page on the buyamp.com site. Um, and thank you. I hope you all have a great day.